All right, so a client brought me his system um, for me to delid the CPU, um, replace the uh, thermal compound between the die and the uh, the heat spreader, and then put it back together. Um, the point of doing this is you get between 15 and 20 degrees Celsius lower CPU temperatures by doing this process. So this is a Core i7-8700K processor. And he brought me, it looks like, everything I need in order to uh, complete the process. Um, he took off the, uh, the fans for the CPU cooler um, before he brought it to me, so I'm not going to be able to do any kind of before and after um, you know, temperature difference testing. But I should be able to uh, at least turn it on after the fact and make sure that it still functions the CPU. Whenever you do this, it voids the uh, the processor warranty. Um, and uh, there's a possibility you could break the CPU, which is pretty expensive. Okay. So there's the cooler and the, uh, the processor down there. Looks like he did a good job with the thermal compound. Um, I'm just going to wipe it off. With a paper towel. Okay, I set the processor over there. Whenever you're gripping the heat sink, I don't know if you'd be able to tell from uh, from the view on the camera, but it'll actually put like imprints on your. Uh, on your th on your fingers where you're gripping it, if you're a little if you grip it a little bit too much and you let it slide around, you can actually cut yourself. So you just got to be a little bit careful whenever you're gripping uh, a heat sink like that. Pretty clean. Let's see. Uh, in order to get this off, I'm also going to have to take uh, these screws out. Set it back here. Looks like the back plate kind of fell out the bottom, so I'm going to have to sandwich that back together um, and these little guys I'll just go ahead and actually I'll try and leave them there so to uh, take out uh, this is a socket um, 1151 CPU um, you kind of push down on this arm and pull it over and it comes up and then the load plate comes up and there you go and that process is the same for uh, going back to, I think, 1156 um, processor sockets. If you grip it this way, there's little indentations in the plastic that actually allow you to get a pretty good hold of the CPU. And bring it up. Set the CPU down right there. Very important not to touch, and especially not drop anything into these, uh, these pins right here. Just going to do that. Pick this thing up and move it out of the way. Set it on the ground down here. Okay, so we've got the CPU. So to do this, you can do it manually just by kind of prying off the uh, 
the heat spreader, but it's a little bit dangerous and difficult. Um, but they sell these delitting kits. This one's uh, from Rocket Cool, and uh, it comes with some pretty basic instructions. So you put the CPU in the uh, in the tool, uh, making sure that the arrow on it, which is the arrow right there, matches the position on the delitting tool. You sandwich it together. Um, you turn a screw that kind of pushes the heat, uh, the integrated heat sink to the side, and that uh, breaks the adhesive. Um, and then when you're ready to put it back together, it comes with a kind of a guide that allows you to center the uh, the heat spreader back on the CPU, and then it, uh, it's got a little extra tool that um, kind of pushes evenly down on the, uh, on the heat spreader and uh, reattaches it. So that's basically how it works. I've never done this before. I've, I've seen it done um, in videos, of course, um, and I watched a few uh, before I sat down to do this. Gamers Nexus has a really good one, and um, I think also Hard OCP had a pretty good one. Um, all right, let's put that aside. Um, so the delitting tool. I think these things are somewhere in the neighborhood of twenty to thirty dollars, and they make the process a lot easier than trying to do it um, more manually and a lot safer also. This particular CPU, um, from what I can tell, doesn't have a lot of um, components around it as far as like little resistors. Uh, some of the other Intel processors do though. And you can do this on AMD processors as well. This is not just a an Intel kind of thing that uh, that's done. Just cleaning it up a little bit, getting the thermal compound pretty well off of it the rest of the way. Looks like a little bit more over here. Uh, I think that's pretty good. So, um, this thing's got a little piece of metal that kind of slides over. So it just kind of comes over like that. You put the CPU in here and then you use this screw, turn it, and it slowly moves this piece of metal over and will break off the, uh, the heat spreader. That's basically how it works. So let's see. Um, that's the top piece. This is the bottom piece. It's got an arrow on it. And what you do is you put the CPU in with the arrow on its corner matching that arrow. You kind of turn this over and lay it down like that. And then in here is the rest of the pieces. That's part of delitting. I'm sorry, for relitting. So is that. These three guys we need. And see, this over here is also delitting. Go ahead and open all of it. All right, so these three put through here and screw them down. And you're supposed to snug them down. They don't have to be super tight, just on there good. Okay, so then you take your Allen wrench, kind of just snug that down, and then you just slowly turn it 
until you hear it and feel it pop. There. So that's off. So then you back the screw out enough to where you can push this over. Take off the three thumb screws. So it's separated. So the way I'm, I'm looking at it right now, the CPU, um, it's writing is right side up, um, and the arrow on the processor is at the bottom left. So when I put this back together, um, I need to make sure that I have it in this correct orientation so this isn't upside down or sideways. I don't know how important that is on this particular processor. Um, on some other ones, like the Core i9s, the higher end processors, there are actual components around the side where you have to put it back in exactly the right configuration, otherwise you can really break it whenever you tighten the, uh, the heat spreader back down. But I should be able to just come in here and lift it off. Yeah. The heat spreader is heavier than I was expecting. Okay, so it's, uh, it's got adhesive that was holding it on, um, and I'm going to see about scraping that off. Um, and I'm also going to clean off uh, on both sides, really. And I'm going to clean off the, uh, the thermal compound uh, that came on it and then replace it with some liquid metal. Um, so that's basically what I'm doing. And uh, my client brought um, the liquid metal, which is um, made by Cool Laboratory and um, the uh, adhesive to put it back on, um, the heat spreader back on, which I think he said he bought off of Amazon, and this brand was recommended by, by people he, uh, he was reading about the D-Lid and Relid process. So, um, I guess I'll start by cleaning off the thermal compound. Just using a paper towel to get the majority of it off. That's pretty good. And on the heat spreader. Got the majority, and then I'll just kind of clean up the rest of it from my table. Okay, so to get off the, um, the adhesive, which is this stuff right here. Um, I don't think it came... I'm not sure if this is supposed to be for that or if this is supposed to be spreading the, uh, the thermal compound. Um, let me see how this does as far as using as a scraping tool. Hmm. It's okay. So on this kind of... Uh, this CPU, the... Um, the 8700K, which is a, a socket um, 1151 CPU, there aren't, that I can see in what I read, um, any little resistors or components around here, so you don't have to worry about breaking any of them. On the higher-end ones, the, um, the socket uh, 2011s, uh, they, some of the CPUs do have little components around the edge, and you do have to worry about you know, possibly breaking them as you're doing this. So this is doing a good job of scraping it off, and it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, um, but you just want to get off the uh, the majority of both this side uh, on the processor as well as over here on the, uh, the heat spreader. As I'm doing this, I'm just kind of holding down the processor with my with my finger. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of hold the processor on there and tip that over, see about getting off some of the loose bits. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna hit it with some air. Whoa! <laughs> that was a close one. It uh, it lifted up the processor. It got uh, got under the edges. Okay. So let's see. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and clean off the uh, the heat spreader as well. And I'm going to come back with uh, with some isopropyl alcohol to get the uh, the CPU die and the heat spreader where I'm touching it right now with my finger uh, cleaned off. So I'm really just interested in getting it off from this edge right here, since that's where I'm going to need to be putting the uh, the new adhesive before I stick this thing back together. All right, something like that. Next step, I think, is to clean off the heat spreader and the dye more thoroughly. Um, what I'm gonna use is isopropyl alcohol and let's see, a Q-tip would be good and possibly another paper towel. Whenever I do this, I just kind of pour a little bit into the cap. It doesn't require much. And then it's just a matter of dipping the Q-tip and giving each, uh, each side a good scrub. And this is 99%, or I think 91, 91% alcohol. So it's going to um, evaporate very quickly. Shouldn't have to come back and really dry it. Okay, I'm going to switch to the other side. Basically just giving it a good scrub. And just pour back the excess. Let's see. Eh, it's drawing pretty quickly. I'll just give it a little dab. Okay, so both sides are clean. Time for the liquid metal. Supposedly, supposedly gives you, uh, like I said, I think a, a 15 to uh, 20 degrees difference um, on the temperatures for the CPU. The, most people wouldn't need to do this. This is for people who are trying to overclock the processor um, beyond a certain point. Um, right now, my client told me that the CPU is running at 4.6 gigahertz, um, and he'd like to take it to 5 gigahertz. And this should be able to, uh, to make that difference. Um, okay, so it's like that. So 
So unlike with regular thermal compound, where I recommend putting a, a dot in the middle and then whenever you put the cooler on, it, uh, it'll spread out evenly, this stuff, from what I, uh, I understand, does not do that. You have to put just a tiny bit on and then use something to, uh, to spread it out. You kind of like paint it on. So I'm just going to squeeze down and just get, oop, that's more than I was expecting to come out. So that much supposedly is enough. I'm going to put about the same amount on this side. So when I was researching this, some people say you're supposed to only put it on one side. Um, Gamers Nexus uh, says to put it on both. I'm going with, uh, with the Gamers Nexus guy. Um, so this tool right here, I'm not sure if it was supposed to be a scraper or a spreader or both. I'm going to try and use it as a spreader and see what happens. Um, it, wa it worked very well as a... Uh, as a scraper. Okay, it seems to be spreading pretty well. So you kind of just want to paint it on is, is, is the idea um, and get it as, as um, thin and consistent as possible. The one thing you don't want is for the, um, there to be like a big blob somewhere and then very little elsewhere. You wanna go for thin, consistent amount across the entire thing. Seems to be working pretty well. If you do have an uh, inconsistent, like a big blob, what that can do is make it so that maybe, you know, so this, uh, say it's a, a four core processor, which I don't remember if this is four or six, but anyway, um, three of the cores will be cool and then one will be like 20 degrees higher because that blob just happened to be right over that core. So that's the uh, that's the thing that you do not want to happen. You want them all to be essentially the same. Looks like I got a little bit off of it. So that looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna come over here and work on the, the heat spreader, but I'm gonna come back and uh, see about getting that little bit off. Hmm. It may not want to stick to that. Let's try with the uh, isopropyl. There we go. Good. Okay, so CPU side is good to go. And basically what I, what I want to do here is put this size and shape um, amount of... Uh, here I suppose or not up there you know pretty much the same on uh, on this on the heat spreader it can go over a little bit over the edge but ideally not too far I think that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to stick that tool up there. Um, all right, so the next step is to put some adhesive around the edge of this thing of the heat spreader.
Let's see, okay. So it's sealed, and I think this right here in the cap is meant to puncture that. Let's see. Yep, sure did. And then I can squeeze this on. And I believe that has a an opening at the end. Let's see. Find something to stick in there and see if it goes through. Otherwise, I'm going to need to make a hole. There we go, paper clip. Hmm. No, I don't think there's a hole there already. Let's see if I can make one with this. I don't need much of a, a bead coming out of this thing. Looks like I'm gonna have to cut it off. So I'm just gonna make as small an opening as I can. Okay, there's a hole. So I should be able to push this stuff up. A little bit coming out. And I don't need to go all the way around this thing. And in fact, um, one of the things I read is you should leave at least uh, one corner open for expansion of gases. I don't know. Um, but really, I just need to keep this thing from coming off and moving around. So I think what I'm going to do is just put a little bit on these thicker pieces on the side. And really, that should be enough to keep it from uh, from moving around. Slash falling off. Well, I suppose I'll put a tiny bit. My hands are a little bit shaky. Don't know why I'm dealing with a, what, a $350 processor I might be killing. Don't know why I'd be nervous. Also, I haven't had anything to eat today, so that's probably part of it. So a little bit there. <laughs> so not really not using much of this stuff. Um, he, I think he said it was $5. Okay, so this thing's ready to go back on. Um, uh, let's see. So this comes with it, and it's a uh, kind of an alignment tool. It's got a little cutout there that kind of matches that, so I'm thinking... It should kind of go like, let's see, is it supposed to snap on around the edge? There we go. I think that that's down. So the arrow is at the bottom left, and I said that in the correct orientation, the writing should be facing that way. Okay, it's exactly upside down. So like that, and then... I just lay the processor down in there, like that. Let's see, is that correct? That's not correct. That's not even close. If I pull this off, the heat spreader is definitely like that way. So did I screw something up, or did the manufacturer screw something up? Let me look at this. Let's see, is this not completely? No, it's not. Okay, um, I'm screwing up here. This, uh, this side right here closest to me is not down all the way. So it's supposed to kind of snap together though from what i understand there that's correct 
Okay, so very little movement now, and the heat spreader is uh, pretty much exactly in the middle, so that's good. All right, glad I checked that. Um, next, this thing goes on, I believe, like that. And then we use two of these suckers to come through and screw it down, I think. Okay, yeah, it still had a little bit of plastic in it. So this comes on like that and goes through and attaches to the bottom piece where the, the CPU is sitting. And you kind of just thumb tighten them down, not crazy tight. Then you come back with this big plastic screw and thumb tighten it down. So, that's it. Um, as far as the D-lid and re-lid process goes, one question I have is how long does this stuff take to cure or otherwise like dry? Uh, 24 hours to fully cure, let dry for one hour, then tighten to torque specifications. So I'm not waiting 24 hours for this thing to completely cure. Um, I'm going to do one hour um, to just dry. And that'll be enough to where it's not going to be moving around. So, one hour. I'll be back. Alright, so it's been an hour. Um, let's go ahead and take off the, the tool. Okay, let's get this stuff out of the way. So I need to pop this off. And there it is. Looks reasonably straight. Like that. I'm actually going to leave it in there for a second. Um, all right, let's get the computer. So the CPU needs to go right back in where it was. And the way you put this in is it's got the arrow on the CPU, which matches up with either an arrow or some kind of a dot down here on the corner. Um, you can also tell you're putting it in right because there's a little bit of plastic there on the socket that matches up to a little notch there and the same plastic that notches up to a matches up to another uh, notch there on the other side. So basically you just set her down. I'll lower the load plate, make sure it goes under this shoulder screw right here. Put the arm down over and to the left. So that's it. That's uh that's reinstalled. Um let's go ahead and clean up the uh, the heat spreader and get the majority of my oil from my fingers off of it and I'm going to get a little more isopropyl alcohol Dip it real quick. Just give it a good once over. Right. So we're going to need the cooler eventually. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just give it a good wipe down. I didn't really touch it, so oils from my finger is not an issue. Just trying to get the uh, as much of the thermal compound off as I can. I don't think it has any more on it. All right. Um, 
So to get these back on, the, the thing is there's a, a back plate on the other side that gravity has uh, made fall out. So I'm thinking I need to stand this up and kind of put my arm around it uh, with the other side of the case off in order to push that back plate into where I can actually screw into it. Oh, I forgot about those. Yeah. Let me go ahead and take these guys off. One of them just fell. All right, let's try that again. So I have to get to the back side here. There is the back plate, barely hanging on for its life. So I gotta push that in and then reattach all this stuff. Probably not gonna be able to have a way to, for y'all to see me doing this. Uh, not sure if this is working visually or not, but the four black spacers go on first. And then this one at the top. And this one at the bottom. These four screws go on. Okay, I need one more. Uh, where did the last one go? Up, oh, it rolled back under here. Screwing them down most of the way. Okay, let's go ahead and put the back back on it. Okay, right, lay it back down. All right, so now I can screw these down the rest of the way. it's probably best to actually screw down with a screwdriver. Fairly tight, not crazy tight. So then we need to uh, put on some thermal compound and I'm using Arctic Silver 5. I'm not sure if it's a good idea to, to use um, liquid metal here or not. I'm just going to use the Arctic Silver 5. If he, uh, if he wants to try putting on the liquid metal between the two, he can do that. So what I generally do is just put a, uh, a pea-sized dot on this size uh, processor. And then when I put the cooler down, it will spread it out. All right, so basically just get the cooler approximately in the middle and set it down. And then reach through and I'm gonna start, just get them started screwing in the two screws down there. So basically it's on there. And then what I do is I go back and forth. Um, I'll probably do eight turns uh, on each one, and that's to keep it so that it goes down relatively flat 
and it's got, it gives it a much better chance of evenly spreading out that thermal compound. Okay, I did six there. I'm gonna do three now. One, two, three more. So I'll do three turns at a time until it's all the way down. Two turns did it. It's tight. About two and a half turns there. So that's on good. Now, um, it's back together with the exception of the cooling fans for the processor, which he did not bring. He had taken them off before he brought it to me. So I'm not going to be able to do a really thorough test. Um, basically what I'm going to do is just hook it up and turn it on and make sure it gets to the BIOS and check the, uh, the temperature there for the, uh, the CPU overall. ports. What are these? Nope, one HDMI. Good. Okay, and we're going to need at least a keyboard connected. All right, main power switch on front power okay looks like it's turning on got lights anyway Let's see what happens pressing f2 and delete to get it okay yeah into the bios cool all right so we got into the bios Okay, let's go to settings, system status. Oh no, wait a minute. Um, up there at the top, CPU temperature is 38 degrees Celsius. Motherboard temperature is uh, 25 Celsius. That's good. Um, let's see. Those are probably going to rise up just because I don't have any fan on the, uh, on the cooler. But I think we'll end it there. Um, I don't have the, the client's um, password for Windows anyway, so we really couldn't do any testing there, um, even if I did hook up a, a fan or two that I have here. Uh, so that's how you um, de-lid, reapply uh, liquid metal, and re-lid a, uh, a socket 1151 CPU. Specifically, this was a um, Core i7-8700K. So it's been a few days since I gave the computer back to my client. I'm just finishing up editing the video. That evening when he picked it up, we uh, turned it back on and went into Windows. And uh, the CPU cores, the six of them, were all within one degree Celsius of each other. And of course, without the fan on the, uh, the CPU cooler, it was going up in temperature pretty quick. So we shut it down, he took it home. Um, he texted me a little bit later that evening, extremely excited and happy. Um, he had overclocked it to 5 gigahertz, and the CPU cores weren't going above 70 degrees Celsius, which is a very successful overclock, and uh, certainly within uh, a reasonable temperature. I hope this information was helpful to you. Thanks for watching.